Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Thank you for tuning in. 25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Robin, I've been a male all my life. I've been a male <laughs> member of the human race. I'm glad. All my life. <laughs> You're happy being a male. <laughs> when, I, when I was a kid and I was in school, and I'm talking elementary school, I, w- I wonder how many other guys had this. You know how the, the boys would always say, ah, I don't want to be around any girls. I, I always yeah. had, I had crushes on girls when I was, I think, two. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or at least in, in uh, first grade. I, oh I, I, actually, I actually do remember uh, something like that. Um, but, you know, it wasn't until like maybe junior high school that it was more than like attraction. It was like, like uh, couldn't take my eyes off, couldn't stop yeah. thinking and very distracted, very distracted by the girls. Yeah. I don't know. Hormones I, don't, I have no in. idea if that's what we're going to talk about, but I'm just trying to figure out. Why teaching a boy would be different than teaching a girl? Mm-hmm. I've often thought, you know, the teachers that had me for a student didn't. It was I wasn't that bad. I mean, I would sometimes you, know, lo- you know, lose attention or whatever. But yeah, <laughs> and it wasn't always <laughs> All because students it do that. wasn't. All well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the girls said this too. Yeah, Doctor Edmund J. Dixon knows a lot more about this than I ever will. Uh, he's a pioneer in the field of cognitive kinesthetics for learning. That sounds interesting. He's a human development specialist. He's a teacher, an administrator, and he's a writer. And he's written a book called Helping Boys Learn. Boy, if you're a teacher and somehow or another the boys aren't getting it, he's got six secrets for teaching boys in the classroom in a book that outlines all of that. And, in fact, the one I have is the teacher edition, it says here. Good morning, uh, Dr. Dixon. Thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Where are you? Where are you calling from? Um, at, at the moment, I am calling from just outside of Toronto. I work uh, both in Canada and the U.S., uh, and, and actually in South Florida as well. So uh, that's where I'm calling from right now, though. Is there any truth to this? And uh, this is probably an aside from the, the real focal, focal point of today's interview, but is there any truth to the urban uh, school setting being worse than, than the suburbs or the rural areas? I, I had a cousin who was a teacher in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and he said it was like the the worst, and and I don't understand why. Well, I think from the perspective that I take, and which which is you know you mentioned, well, I'm not sure why a boy would be different. The fact that boys do learn differently, and some of the things that I emphasize are perhaps easier for boys to access uh, more frequently in in a rural setting, and in a, in an urban setting, sometimes there's a lot of emphasis on things that that make it really hard for boys to learn and they don't get the outlets that they might have otherwise. And, uh, you know, in some schools now, for example, they've taken away recess, right? Well, imagine when you were a kid. <laughs> that's it. No recess. That, I, that I know. That, really that, that, that sounds crazy. It sounds counterproductive, too. Well, and, and that's what we see. And and just to mention, too, uh, we're going to, you mentioned the teacher edition. Actually, I have a parent edition and and the things that we talk about today, uh, I really emphasize that parents have a tremendous power at home to help the boys who might not be as engaged. Uh, it's just my books give different things depending on who you are. If you're you know, a teacher, I give tips for what you do with groups in a classroom. If you're a parent, they're tips for um, what you're able to do at home. And a parent can go to helpingboysLearn.com at any point and find out. And uh, and and uh, this is like opposite of what we hear like during you know during the uh, different government sessions and all. They say that um, girls aren't good at math. They're not as adept at boys. Uh, they they uh, need all this extra help. I mean, why is there such controversy over this when each student should be taken on a one-on-one basis and not by gender? Well, that's right. They should be seen one-on-one, but there are tendencies that I saw, you know, again, I've been in education 30-plus years, and I had uh, my own sons, and you do see there's a difference uh, in the way that males and females often approach learning, particularly when they're younger. And there's not there's not a case that's one better than the other. As a matter of fact, you, know, you mentioned the girls in the 1990s. We spent a lot of time actually working on helping girls engage more in math and science. And... Uh, 
that's actually started to pay off. Uh, actually, the, the winner of the Google Science Fair contest this year was a 16-year-old girl who had a, a really cool experiment. You see more and more women are moving into some of the maths and science uh, careers and even in engineering, which you might not have seen as much before. Um, and that's really happened, I think, as a result of the past 10 to 15 years. The changes in the society, the more uh, digital our society is, the more emphasis on everybody having an opportunity. But the reason I wrote the book is because we see the exact opposite with many boys, that boys are actually becoming less engaged in learning at every level, and that they are not entering a higher education, college, etc., at the same level and actually not staying as long. And if you talk to any teachers or even parents now, and they look at their sons, you'll see that many of them are much less engaged in school. Uh, what, what I always say is, okay, um, what would it take to have your son as engaged uh, with his school learning as he is with his Minecraft video game? Uh, and, and that's something parents are like, well, yeah. Um, wow. So that's, yeah. that's why I wrote the book, you know, because it's a matter of engagement. That is an interesting phenomenon, isn't it? That, that uh, a boy would, and it does seem like it's a gender difference. It doesn't seem like you see girls that into the video games, not that they're not, or mm -hmm. not that they never are. But it does seem like there's a there is a tendency for boys to be more into that. Um, you know what the, the one thing I, just if you could comment on it when we hear that boys are, are restless they're, they're not or students in general but mostly boys that given Ritalin or some other kind of a chemical or some kind of a, a medicine um, that always struck me as something wrong. I, I, yes. I, do you agree with that? I mean, you're a teacher; you probably know better. Well, you know the thing is, it's. The, 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 <laughs> the, the phrase I always use is, physiology is not character. In other words, if you've got some bodily needs or whatnot, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your character, your ability to learn or to be a good person or fulfill your potential. And this is what I discovered, which I think is really important for parents and teachers to understand, that boys actually, due to their physiology and the way their brains wire, they approach learning differently. I'll give you a perfect example. One of my six secrets is movement. Anybody who looks at a grade one class across the class and looks at the boys and the girls is often going to see the boys tremendously more movement oriented than the girls. Um, and that also they'll, they'll see that they're e more easily distracted by movement. You mentioned you lost focus sometimes. Well, again, imagine a classroom full of kids or, or your, your, your son, you're trying to help him with homework that's supposed to take five minutes and now it's already an hour and you can't get him yeah, to focus. Yeah, yeah. Well, the reason for that is boys' brains hardwire for perception of movement and the, uh, the ability to move, and that's why they love video games so much, because you, know, you could say, well, how come he can't sit still for 10 minutes and do his homework, but he'll sit still on the couch for an hour playing a video game? Well, the fact of the matter is the video game is saturated with movement. Oh, and, wow. And boys love that. And so if you want to make that helpful at home, and again, I, I emphasize all these tips at helpingboyslearn.com. You can have, say you're a parent, and you've got an eight-year-old at home, and he comes home, and he's just got to learn these vocabulary words for school the next day. Right. And he won't sit still. He's bouncing around. Right. What you do is you take a ball, you give it to him, and you say, okay, what's the definition of the first word? And when he tells you it, he can toss you the ball. But you can't throw it back to him until he tells you the definition. Oh, of the I word. love that. Oh, that's now, great. It sounds silly, but you can imagine how many tears that reduces at homework time. Oh, that is amazing. That's an amazing you know? idea. I love yeah. that. And, and, and that comes from the fact that we're just respecting the physiology of the boys. And, and uh, in classrooms, I say teachers, no, you're not going to throw balls around the class, but you can. You're teaching the water cycle. So once you start to explain it, then you stop everything. You get the kids up in groups and they have to physically represent in a frozen picture. Wow each step of the water cycle, and then they write. And, you know, I've done research with more than 50,000 teachers and, and kids, and uh, what we see is that those kids who do that, particularly the boys, write better answers afterwards because they have a kind of experiential knowing of what it needs to be. I love that. And, and they're more passionate about learning. So You know, you know that... that that's the focus. I went to school when blackboards were still being used, and I remember uh, my teacher throwing an eraser at me because I was talking to Stephen sitting next to me, and it got my attention. <laughs> so throwing something definitely makes it. <laughs> no, I'm I'm just being silly right there, but I re I really I love that suggestion. Yeah. I thought you were going to say like <laughs> shake the flashcards or something. Um, we need we need to take a little break. Gosh, we're all ears now that you've told us that much. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Edmund J. Dixon is going to help us teach boys. We'll be right back with him after this. 
The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunshine mixing with clouds today. There'll be a thunderstorm in the area during the afternoon hours. High 89 to 93. Partly cloudy tonight, though 71 to 75. Sunshine mixing with clouds tomorrow with a couple of thunderstorms around in the afternoon. High 84 to 90. For Wednesday, a couple of heavy thunderstorms. Otherwise, clouds and some sun. High 83 to 87. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hey, it's Christy with Ocala Mac and PC Repair and Ocala Guest Wi-Fi to let you know we have you covered. We are the only local certified Apple and Microsoft computer company in Ocala. We are family owned and operated from mobile repair to wireless networks, viruses, new systems, or security cameras. We do it all. Check us out online, OcalaMacPC.com, or give us a call, 352-566-8324. Tell them Nick, Madison, or Mason sent you and get free diagnostic. Get your internet telephone service from the company that brought affordable internet service to Ocala in the first place. All is safe is the sister company of Ocala Guest Wi-Fi, a company you've known and trusted for all your internet needs. Whether you need a phone or hundreds, we've got the products and services to meet your needs both now and in the future. Our plans include everything from local and long distance calling to equipment maintenance and even software upgrades. You can count on all is safe to give you cost certainty knowing that your bill will be the same next week, next month, or even next year. Call 352-450-8647 today. Tell them how to cut your monthly telephone bill up to six. Let's face it, nowadays it can be hard to find American-made products, and that's something that Cabinet Sales of North Florida is well aware of. That's why they're an authorized dealer of Wellborn Cabinetry, family-owned and American-made since 1961. Cabinet Sales of North Florida is your answer for complete turnkey kitchen remodels and whole house cabinetry. Their cabinets are finished with solvent-based enamels for a long-lasting finish that's second to none. Available in an incredible selection of door styles and colors to choose from to turn your dream kitchen into a reality. In-house design and drawing services are available. Come by and see our displays for yourself at the Floors of the Villages, 3935 County Road 216 in Oxford or Exquisite Design Kitchen and Bath in Bellevue, right across the street from the Bellevue Library. So whether you're looking for bookcases, kitchen, bath, or outdoor kitchen, Cabinet Sales of North Florida is your one-stop source of quality cabinets. For a free estimate, call 352-427-2647. That's 352-427-2647. Cabinet Sales of North Florida. Veterans are the foundation upon which our freedom is built. Listen to The Source WOCA each Thursday at 9 a.m. to Veterans News with Hank Whittier from Vets Helping Vets. You'll hear tributes, information on veterans issues, and stories that will make you laugh, cry, and feel proud. Veterans News always focuses on the military, past and present, and on our first responders. Veterans News is brought to you each week by Bob Wines Camellia Gardens and Nursery, keeping you blooming since 1952. All right, 12 minutes now before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Dr. Edmund J. Dixon is our guest. He's on the phone. He has a book called Helping Boys Learn, and uh, he's got some secrets in the book for teaching boys in the classroom. Kind of gave us an amazing illustration just a little bit, for, and first gave us the reason as to why throwing a ball might help with your mm-hmm. at, ho- at home teaching. I'm not so sure how that would work in the classroom. You'd have to have balls thrown at everybody. <laughs> catch, catch the ball. You can't throw a <laughs> Give the answer. Uh, doctor, thank you for, for being with us today i really love what you're saying you know i'm and is hmm in in your work as a teacher i'm guessing it runs the gamut and and would the the movement thing be true for every boy i i um first of all i was a bad catch <laughs> i couldn't have caught anything I, I i would have been bad at that you would have thrown me the ball oh man i missed it again Still to this day, somebody throws me my keys or throws keys. Damn, Mr. Keys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and you know, that that's a, that's a great question. First of all, there is a continuum. Uh, one of the interesting things is, is that maybe, you know, about a seventh of boys, this might not be as, as powerful for, but 20% of girls have what we call the male mind. So they often have an attachment to this. And some parents out there who are listening to the things I'm describing say, gee, that sounds like my daughter or myself. Right, that, I bet. That may, may really be true. Um, and in terms of the, the throwing the ball was just a technique for the actual idea of movement. But as I mentioned in the classroom, when you get your body up and you physically represent something where you're using your body, that does the same thing. And it works on a metaphorical sense, too. Boys, by and large, tend to lose interest and passion when they don't have a sense they're moving ahead. It's almost like you know, the old you know, Woody Allen joke about a relationship being like a shark. It has to keep moving. Yeah. Boys seem to need to feel that they're they're going to be moving towards something. 
Um, and, and there's a really good reason for that as well that's another secret. And by the way, um, uh, on the website, helpingboyslearn.com, there is a quiz that's presently free for parents to take that will tell them which of these six secrets most motivates their son. They may have a sense of it, but once they take this five-minute quiz, it, it really gives them a great indication. And, right. and some parents might come up with something called game. Now, we mentioned video games, but there's something even more powerful about this in terms of getting boys to be motivated. Um, I didn't know this in 30 years of teaching and being a principal uh, until I actually went and did university research and found out that um, boys release testosterone, not nor as we normally think of maybe when they're teenagers or in the womb, but they actually start to release jolts of testosterone around ages 5, 6, and 7. And when they, it happens when they set a goal and achieve it. And so if you have a little boy of that age and he gets, you know, starts moving older, you may notice he gets a little more competitive or he loves video games. And that's because he gets a physiological kick when he succeeds at a goal that gets set. And that's why a video game's perfect because you can move up different stages and the same with sports, etc. And so for a boy to be really engaged uh, because of his physiology, he can, you can actually set up something that creates a game out of a situation. So let's take a, an 11-year-old boy who is, again, I'm talking, say, to parents at home, and um, the, he's this business, again, where he's supposed to be doing some very simple homework, ask, answering a few questions, etc., and it seems to be just a long, a long haul. And so what you can do is you can say to him, look, how long do you think it would take you to do that first question um, and do it right and, and then just listen to what he says? He says, oh, I could do that in two minutes. And then you say, okay, fine. And you set the timer on your, your phone or, or in the kitchen, and you just close your mouth and say, okay. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I love that one, and too. And what happens is his physiology kicks in. It becomes a game, right? And so he does it. He gets it done, and he wins. He gets a physiological feeling of victory, right? He releases testosterone. But the cool thing is he just released it around his mouth. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Often that doesn't happen. That is amazing. Now, is that true uh, throughout our lifetimes? I mean, will that still work on me? <laughs> well, what I find it translates into is challenges, right? Males often love challenge, and that's one of my secrets, too, that, that we've got, you know, challenges on a more higher level one. They like to set challenges for themselves, sometimes even foolish ones. When um, uh, Edmund Mallory, the famous mountain climber, says, why are you climbing Mount Everest? You know, his, his famous response was, because it's there. Well, mm -hmm. that's a kind of dumb response, really, especially to a woman. Like, well, what's, what's that mean, because it's there? But for a male, it sets a challenge. And, and so for often, again, in life, you find males setting these goals that are, are larger challenges and trying to achieve them. And those males who are most successful in life, who contribute most back to our communities and become really you know, good men, are often setting challenges for themselves and developing mastery and meaning around them. And so you know, my approach is not just to have someone feel good about learning. It's actually to make them passionate and self-confident and independent as a learner because honestly the kind of world they're going into they have to be that way how, how do you help say like the middle teenager like the boys that are turning 16 and some of them they just think they're all that and they need help with the social skill arena they're very good in school but they need to respect other people more right and and they need to be able to see that See, I often link it up to what it is they're trying to accomplish. Often their social skills are pushed down because their egos are up, but also often that is a sign of insecurity, really, right? <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? The, the, the person that really has to put themselves out there so big is often insecure. And so part of it, again, is to helping them gain responsibility for their own actions, seeing that it'll help them accomplish the goals that, they, uh, that they'll want to accomplish. And, you know, in school it's really hard, though. If you run into a 15- or 16-year-old who thinks... See, again, a lot of boys' resistance and learning, and I discovered this over the years, is actually uh, sometimes because they don't think they're that smart in class. They just don't do that. So they just pretend it's not a big deal or they cause trouble or they don't work that hard at it. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard thing to overcome when you're 16. And, and, you know, so that's why I like to start earlier, having them passionately involved in learning, and then it, it makes them better social interactors as well in the classroom. Let me, let me ask you this, uh, and I, I'm, I'm grasping what you're saying about the game, playing a game and making it a competitive game. 
if that game is competitive and it's completely on a tablet, let's say, or a computer screen, as opposed to competitive and there's another student or maybe even your dad or, or somebody that you're competing with, does that make a difference? Does competitive work whether it's with electronics or not? I mean, I hope maybe... Good question. It does. It does. It does. And the thing about competitive games and whatnot for males in particular is it's often a route to what we alluded to earlier, those superior social skills. In other words, becoming... Become, the whole concept of, of, of being a good sport and being able to win and lose with grace, you know, all of those things, those are things that boys often learn in the context of uh, a competitive type situation with other people. And sometimes you can't get that, right, really on the, the tablet alone. You, you can get that through, but you can't get right. the other thing. And, right. and, and, you know, the sixth secret that I bring up in the book is called meaning. And it's this whole idea of, you know, when I was a teacher, um, uh, girls rarely ever asked me, what, sir, why do we have to learn this? Boys asked all the time, what do we have to learn this for? <laughs> yeah, right, right. And, and part of it has to do <laughs> with some meaning. In other words, what, what is this? For boys, they want to be able to do something with their learning. What can I do with this? But deep down, what every boy wants is to be a hero. There's a hero complex in all males. And... And when we respect that and show them how they can be heroic by being in service, contributing back, taking that learning that they learned, I'll give you a perfect example, you know, taking the learning that they learned and turning around and going and teaching someone else. So if I was a teacher and I had a 12-year-old in the class and he had a harder time with, you know, certain math concepts and whatnot, I'd ask him to help, help me learn them so that we could teach them to a kid in a younger grade. And often you see that turns a boy around right away because wow. it gives him a meaning and also gives him a heroic purpose in learning. And sometimes we diminish that. And, you know, some of the most terrible things males have done in history have been trying to prove that they're significant, right? That, you know, you've got this whole big thing now about um, uh, spousal abuse and things like that. Often those are males who are actually using their anger and their bodies to prove to their, their significant other that they are they are significant. Wow. And I, I find that doesn't happen as much when males um, uh, have a, a good sense of themselves and the fact that they can contribute. And this is this is the challenge we have because we have a lot of males who are um, moving into society where women are doing much better now. And actually, in middle management, you see women moving right up. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. But the other the flip side of it is. If a, a male needs to find a way to get into the, the society in a positive manner, or what I find is that they don't necessarily go violent, they go the other way. They become the 33-year-old who sits in the basement and plays video games. Right? Yeah, yeah. So other, other do you, people in their lives. Do you know, you, you, you said the, the part about wanting to be a hero, and I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that the boy who speaks up in class and says, what do we need to learn this for, in a sense is trying to be a hero because he wants the other kids to hear the teacher say, you know, you're right, Johnny. We don't need this. I'm not going to teach this anymore. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> you're the hero. Right? I mean, can you imagine if the teacher actually did that? Well, see, but what a teacher, a wise teacher will do is they'll enlist that kid to help teach the others. You know? They'll, they'll flip it around. Not right at that moment, but later on they might say, you know, we're having a hard time with this, Johnny. What, what do you think? What would be the way for us us to actually learn this, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, some days you might be afraid, oh, he'll say, let's not learn it. But that's not my experience. Boys actually want to be useful. They really do. Mm -hmm. So when you give them that ability to do that, they actually, it becomes much easier, much easier for them and for the people that have to teach them and care for them as parents. Doctor, you have um, given us some really great um illustrations of how to teach boys and some really good ideas. The book is called Helping Boys Learn. I have a copy of the book. This is the teacher edition, so call me if you want this one. I'll leave it here for you at the station. And doctor, we're almost out of time. Give me your website again so that we can get the book. It is helpingboyslearn.com and there's also a parent edition and a free quiz there. Helpingboyslearn.com uh, Call us if you need that repeated or just go to WOCA.com. Robin already has the website listed there on the guest list. And this video, by the way, this, the video of this audio will be on the WOCA YouTube page by 2 o'clock today. Thank you so much, Doctor. 
Thank you for having me. All right, we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. California wildfires force hundreds from their homes. Two wildfires are forcing evacuations for more than 500 homes. One fire is in the central part of the state near Bass Lake, while the other is further north, east of Sacramento. Fire crews are working by air and on the ground to put out the fire that has so far burned at least 21 structures. Fox News Radio's Tanya J. Powers. Secretary of State John Kerry's in Paris trying to build an international coalition to take on ISIS. That includes Iraq, where he said its formation of a new government is key. Get the government and watch what happens. And that's exactly what's happening. So I hope you feel that the push and the risk uh, was worth it. Other Arab nations say they'll take part in airstrikes. Orders for Apple's new iPhone 6 are off the charts. More than 4 million pre-orders have poured in over the past 24 hours, the demand surpassing the current supply. Fox News, we report, you decide. Worn out shocks and struts make your car handle like a banana boat being towed.